Welcome back to Books of the Book. We've been studying the book of Galatians and we're talking today about the seed of Abraham. And uh, we just left off at the break talking about the seed not being Isaac, but being Christ. And Jim, I think we were going to pick up right there. Yes, uh, in verse 16 of chapter 3, um, we read where it says, Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He does not say, And to seeds as of many, but as of one, and to your seed who is Christ. And we made the point that the seed is not Isaac. The seed is not the lineage, uh, uh, the Jewish heritage, as it were. Uh, the seed is not that which circumcision brings you into connection with, but rather the seed is Christ. They were connected to Isaac, but if they weren't connected to Christ, they weren't going to be recipients of the promise. And this verse right here, if you look in your Bible, there's quotations around it because he's actually quoting from the book of Genesis. That's right, and I, and I think it's important for us to note uh, we miss a lot when we, when we fail to realize or we forget that all of the New Testament writers taught from the Old Testament. That's right. They preached the gospel from the Old Testament. The Bible Jesus used was the Old Testament scriptures. And sometimes people get the idea that the Old Testament is not gospel-centered. We only stick with the New Testament. But Jesus himself told the disciples on the road to Emmaus who didn't... Uh, basically receive all that the prophets had wrote right. or spoken. He said, you fools and slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets have spoken. Right. So Jesus said, you're foolish if you're not taking in what's written in the Old Testament because that's the foundation. That's, that gives you the background of a lot of what's being taught in the New Testament. And the Apostle Paul well understood that Old Testament scriptures. That's what he was using. And so when he is writing and quoting it's so important for us to go back and find out what that, what the setting was, what the message was, what the story was, where he was quoting from, and it will fill out the picture for us uh, and give us the real context of what's being communicated. That's right. And if you look at this particular situation, uh, we do learn something very significant by going back to where he's quoting from, and it's in Genesis chapter 22. So if you go back to Genesis 22 and verse 18... Uh, it says, in your seed, and again, it is the singular, seed, um, that's what Paul was saying, not seeds, but seed. In your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. Now, I find that fascinating. Mm -hmm. It says that Abraham received this inheritance by promise. That's right. And we think, oh, see, it's the promise of faith, not obedience, not anything to do with the law, it's just faith, but yet you go back to the exact place where God makes that promise, and it says, the reason I'm giving you this promise is because you have obeyed my voice. And it only makes sense because true obedience, the kind that has the, the, the Spirit of Christ with it, is an obedience that stems from faith. And Abraham had that faith that obeyed. That's right. And so, uh, you know, we, we kind of went through some of this before. And so we're going to go to Galatians 3.19 okay. and, and continue on it, where it says, uh, he says, what purpose then does the law serve? It was added because of transgressions till the seed should come to whom the promise was made. And it was appointed through angels, uh, uh, through angels by the hand of a mediator, etc. So Paul's just making the point here that the purpose that the law was given was not to cancel out that promise. It wasn't contradictory to the promise. It actually was working in conjunction with the promise. But the commandment was to help bring the people to a realization of their transgression because they'd right. far, forgotten their true condition and they'd forgotten their need of a righteousness outside of themselves. That's right. And it picks up really clearly on that in verse 23. And we've already been through these verses, but it, it, it's the foundation for where we're headed. Mm -hmm. In verse 23, it says, But before faith came... We were kept under guard by the law, kept for the faith which would afterward be revealed. Therefore, the law was our tutor to bring us to Christ that we might be justified by faith. By faith, that's right. But after faith has come, we are no longer under a tutor. So again, the law was serving as that tutor that was showing us that we were outside the will of God, showing us that being outside of the will of God uh, gave us a certain penalty of death and giving us motivation to go to Christ to find what we needed. And that something that we needed was through faith, the promise of the Spirit. We read that in verse 14 of chapter 3. We received the promise of the Spirit through faith. So through faith, 
We are born of the Spirit, That's born right. again. And this is a significant point. What that means is that the Spirit of God writes His law on our hearts. And then it says, no longer do we need a tutor. In other words, when the Spirit of God comes in, we don't need someone to say, don't commit adultery. We're not going to want to commit adultery. That's right. We don't need it to say, um, be sure and keep the Sabbath. We're going to desire to do God's will and to That's keep right. the Sabbath. No longer is the law serving in that purpose. We have now come to a point where we agree with God. That's and, right. and because of that, in verse 26, it makes this beautiful statement. For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. We become sons through faith. That seed experience, being part of the family of Abraham, happens right. through faith. That's right. And so what's, that, what we need to grasp about that is when we're talking about the seed, for the viewers who may not be grasping the terms, some Bibles will say descendant. The whole idea is this. The Jewish nation understood that it was through the descendant of Abraham, it was through Abraham that, that the whole nation would be blessed, and they understood that that blessing was them. Anybody who was born through the line of Abraham, anybody who was descendant, a literal descendant of Abraham, and even to this day, Jim, there are, there are many Christians who understand that the nation of Israel mm. has this special place in God's heart because of their natural lineage. Right. They, they don't take into account certain places and certain things like, for example, in the New Testament book of uh, uh, John chapter 8, uh, Jesus is there talking to the religious leaders and he tells these Jewish leaders, natural born Jews, if you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. If you were Abraham's children, what's that about? They, they were children. Abraham. But the point, G Jesus was making the point that Paul's making right here, that you know, the, the, the understanding of the Jews was that their inheritance was going to be based on being natural born descendants of the line of Abraham. Right. Whereas when Paul says Abraham's seed was not his descendant, that the promise was made through wasn't Isaac, but long after Isaac, through the line of Isaac, Jesus Christ and all who would be born of him. Right. instead of born of Isaac. I want, to, I want to look at that just real quickly in a couple passages. We're going to go to Romans chapter 5, and we're going to look at verses 18 and 19 here. Romans 5, verse 18 and 19. The Bible says, Therefore, as through one man's offense, judgment came to all men. That's talking about Adam. It was Adam's sin that then passed sin on to the human race. It goes on to say... Um, resulting in condemnation, even so through one man's righteous act, that would be Jesus, right. the free gift came to all men, resulting in justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so also by one man's obedience many will be made righteous. And so it puts a, it puts a contrast here between Jesus and Adam, and we see Paul doing that again in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, first in verse 22. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 22, it says, For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ all shall be made mm. alive. And then in verse 45, it says, And so it is written, The first man, Adam, became a living being. The last, Adam, became a life-giving spirit. So here he actually applies this term last Adam to Jesus. He's comparing the two, and this is what he's saying. Just as Adam was the progenitor of the human race, in other words, we all descended from Adam. Right. In the same way, and because we were descended from Adam, we received what Adam passed on to us, the nature of Adam, the fallen nature of sin. So in the same way, those who received the nature of the second Adam, one who came in Adam's place and lived the perfect life that Adam failed to live, mm -hmm. that last Adam becomes the progenitor of a new race. In other words, those who accept Jesus and are born of Christ, born of the, his seed, born, born of the, the spirit, spirit, become a member of that seed, that new family. Amen. And so the whole, the, 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 the problem with the thinking of is the Jews of Christ's day and of Paul's day here when he's trying to address them is that their understanding was that the blessing came from being born. And as I said, even many Christians today, that the blessing came from being born of the nation of Israel instead of being born 
of the true Israel, Jesus Christ. You know, Israel was a name given to Jacob once he became a spiritual man and an overcomer. It was a spiritual name and it was pointing forward to the true Israel, Jesus Christ, who was going to be the head of a new race who would pass on his nature to humanity and then bring them into the family of God. Amen. Amen. And you know, when he continues in the book of Galatians, mm -hmm. he makes that point pretty strongly. Um, if you look back at Galatians chapter 3, and uh, I'll pick back up in verse 26 so that we can catch the sense of what he was saying. It says, For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. Now that was a, uh, well, to be mm. honest, it was somewhat of a heretical statement yeah. for him to be making to them. What? All sons of God? You know, they believed that only the circumcised were sons of God. Only those were of the direct lineage of Abraham. And if you weren't of the direct lineage of Abraham, then you needed to be circumcised. So much so that it didn't even matter so much how you lived right. as long as you were circumcised. Again, circumcision became a substitute, a, a substitute for obedience, a substitute for genuine faith. And so he's making the point, no, if you want to be part of the family, you have to have the faith of Abraham that brings the spirit, thereby being born of Christ, born of the spirit of God. And it says in verse 27, For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free, there is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. Now the part that really stung to uh, some was probably that first part. There is neither Jew nor Greek. That's right. I mean, here Paul was saying there's no distinction you are all equal heirs to salvation. The new birth is the question. Mm -hmm. And then in verse 29, he says, And if you are Christ's, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs mm. according to the promise. Isn't that powerful? It's powerful to me because I'm not a natural born descendant of Abraham, yeah. but I'm an heir. <laughs> That's right. Of that That's inheritance. Right. And th there's another place where it says this, and I thought it would be valuable for us to look at it because the New Testament is not mm. silent on this point. If you look right. at Romans chapter 2, Romans chapter 2 and verse uh, 28, and uh, it was either earlier or perhaps our last episode, we were touching on verses 25 and 26. But in verse 28, it says, For he is not a Jew who is one outwardly, nor is circumcision that which is outward in the flesh, but he is a Jew who is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart. In the spirit, not in the letter, whose praise is not from men, but from God. So when you look at this passage, it's pointing out that it's the spirit, ultimately, and not the letter that makes us children of Abraham. So the spirit here is speaking about inward religion that finds its way into the letter, into the outside. Mm -hmm. But the letter doesn't always mean that you are obeying in the spirit. That's right. And so... We have this beautiful picture painted for us in the book of Galatians that any one of us can be a child of Abraham through Christ. May God bless you.